Can you write any JavaScript number using only three symbols? Plus, left square bracket and right square bracket. This is a challenge I took on after getting inspiration from this question, which asks why this mysterious combination of plus operators and square brackets results in the string 10. And the explanation was very interesting. I've created a JS fiddle to help visualize the explanation. So here is the complicated sequence of pluses and square brackets that results in the string 10. And actually I'm going to copy and paste it into a JavaScript console to show that that is really working. So what we'll do is we'll break it up and we'll look at this section here in green, plus left square bracket and right square bracket. Now this simple operation results in the number 0. And the reason this is, is because it's using the unary plus operator to cast whatever's on the right hand side to a number. And when you convert an empty list to a number, it happens to result in 0. So whenever we see this pattern of these three symbols, we know JavaScript is going to evaluate that as 0. So whenever we want to represent 0 with just these three symbols, we can use this exact combination. So what I'm going to do is shift click this and simplify all occurrences of the value 0. So what that's now going to do is just show zero in place of everywhere that used to have plus left square bracket and right square bracket, just to make it easier to comprehend. So now we're going to take a look at this section here on the left that's in green, and this combination of characters is going to result in the number one. So here I have the simplify zero value, but remember that this is actually represented using those three symbols. So what we are doing here is we're using the plus plus operator, or better referred to as the pre-increment operator, to try increment a number. And if we can try increment the number 0, then we're obviously going to get the number 1. So normally we use the pre-increment operator on variables. So if we have a variable a, which will assign to 10, my 1 key is not working on my keyboard, so I'm going to have to copy and paste this off Google. So if we have a variable with the value of 10, we can use the plus plus operator to basically increment the value at that variable. So now in future the a variable is going to be the value 11. But at the same time this operator evaluates to the resulting value, so we can use that in expressions. For example if we do alert and then plus plus a, well the next increment of a will result in 12 and that will be alerted on our screen so you can see here 12 comes up. The problem is we don't have a variable to increment, and if you just try increment a number on its own, it's not going to work. So the only time you can use the pre-increment operator is when that number is actually stored somewhere else, for example in a variable, and then you can increment the value at that variable. So there's actually another place we can store our number, and that's in a list. So if we put the number 20 in a list, and we extract out the zeroth item, we can now use the plus plus operator resulting in 21. So in our case we need to increment the number 0 and so we'll have that and that will result in 1. Now interestingly when we use the increment operator it will convert whatever value we have to a number before it tries to increment it. So we can actually increment an empty list as well. So this empty list will get converted to the number 0 and then it will be incremented by 1 uh, resulting in the number 1. So this doesn't require us to manually convert the empty list to zero using the plus operator as the plus plus operator will do this for us. So this basically tells us how this combination of characters results in the number one. So now what I can do is shift click this and simplify all occurrences of the value one. And now you can see this is what we've got. So we've got one plus and then zero and zero is put into a list. Now can you guess what happens when we add a number and a list together? When in JavaScript, we normally either add numbers together or we concatenate strings together. And JavaScript needs to make a decision here what it wants to do. And in this case, JavaScript will decide to convert all the values to strings and concatenate them together. So when you put zero into an empty list and convert that to a string, it will simply result in a string with the character zero in it. So now the one and the zero are being concatenated, resulting in the string 10. So basically, I wanted to take this a step further and see if I can figure out how to evaluate any JavaScript number using just these three symbols. Whether that be 23 or minus 2.7 or infinity or none even. So the next challenge was to get numbers greater than 0 or 1 and we could use the same tactic we used to get the number 1 by just continually using the pre-increment operator. So if we have the number 3, 
you can see we have the value 1 which is accomplished using this pre-increment operator on an empty list and then we put that 1 into another list and once again use this pre-increment operator resulting in the value 2 and then we put the number 2 into another list we use the pre-increment operator again and this time we have the value 3 so that's why this combination of pluses and square brackets will evaluate to the number 3 with that logic it turns out it was quite simple to create any positive integer as it's just a matter of concatenating each digit and then at the very end converting it to a number. So let's look at the number 456. So this looks like a scary mess at the moment but all I'm going to do here is shift click and I'm going to simplify all occurrences of a digit as we've seen how to accomplish all digits by using the pre-increment operator. For example the digit 6 is accomplished by incrementing 5 which is accomplished by incrementing 4 which is accomplished by incrementing 3 etc. So it's a matter of just concatenating 4, 5 and 6. So we're once again putting these numbers into a list so that JavaScript will convert those to a string and so this will result in the string 4, 5, 6. So we somehow need to convert this string to a number and firstly we need to wrap this expression in parentheses so that the syntax is intact. The problem is we don't have access to parentheses. So the solution I came up with to create parentheses is to place this expression into a list and then just take out the zeroth item from the list. So now that will just result in the string 456 but the syntax will be intact because we have our custom parentheses. So what I'm going to do is shift click and simplify all the current parentheses. So now in future to make it easier to comprehend you're now going to see parentheses around the expression but now you at least know how we've implemented it. So in the end we can convert this string to a number using the plus operator resulting in the number 456. So the next challenge was to create negative numbers and numbers with decimal points. So if we could just get access to a string containing the minus character and the dot character then we'd be able to concatenate that to our string and when we convert it to a number it would be either negative or it might have a decimal point. So this was definitely the trickiest part of this challenge. How on earth were we going to get the minus character and the dot character? So I spent hours trying to come up with ideas here. I was going through all the JavaScript um, information on the internet to try to find out how to do this. And in the end, I had to just ask a question on codegolf.stackexchange. But I'll first go through the ideas I was thinking of. So I decided that the best thing to do was to try obtain the minus character so that we could create the string 1e-1 and then convert that to a number and this scientific notation would result in 0 0.1 and when we convert that back to a string we now have access to the dot character. Now you might be wondering how was I planning on getting the e character and actually it's quite simple. If we could somehow get the value undefined then we could convert that to a string and extract the fourth character out which is the letter e. And as you might know in JavaScript, it is not that difficult to get undefined. So my idea was to create a list, and if we just get something random out of that list, then it will give us undefined. For example, if we use square bracket notation and look up an empty string, there is no property that's an empty string, and so that would result in undefined. Now we can't use quotes in our syntax, but what we can do is use an empty list instead, as that will be implicitly converted to an empty string, and so we'll still have the same result. So when we convert that to a string, we now have the string undefined. And if we wrap this whole thing in our magic parentheses, we can now extract the fourth character. So now we have to go back to figuring out how to obtain the minus character. So I tried to find out all areas in JavaScript that would somehow give us something that has a minus in it. The first thing that came to mind is a few numerical constants that exist in JavaScript. For example, number dot min safe integer would result in this negative number, and when we convert that to a string, we would be able to extract the minus character. We also would be able to get negative infinity, and this would also have minus inside it. The final constant was number dot min value, which in scientific notation had minus again. So I definitely dug myself down a rabbit hole here and tried to figure out is there any way to get access to these numerical constants, and I really don't think there is. I first needed to get access to this global number variable because otherwise we wouldn't be able to access those constants. I was really hoping that we would be able to access those constants on a regular number, but that wasn't the case. 
After a while it finally clicked that we can get the constructor of a number and that will give us back this number object. And we can actually do this for any value to go back to the constructor and access static methods and properties. So with this we would be able to now access min safe integer or any of the other constants. I nearly managed to be able to construct this constructor string. A few of the characters were available from the undefined string and I came up with an interesting way to get a few more characters. As you might have noticed the word undefined sounds very similar to the word find and arrays happen to have a method called find. If we don't call this method but we instead convert this method to a string we now have access to a lot more characters. But this still was not enough to get all the characters we needed for the constructor string and it was very clear there was no way I was going to get access to any of these other characters so I had to come up with another idea. There was one function that I always remember in JavaScript that can return minus one and that is the index of function. And if you don't know what that does, the index of function tells us the index of an element in an array. So if we look for the element eight, so that's going to be index two, so that's going to be the third item. And if we simply call index of without any arguments, the first argument is implicitly undefined and this is then implicitly converted to the string undefined and it is very clear that the string undefined does not exist in an empty list and so minus one is returned. So if there was some way we could call the index of function without any parameters then we would have access to minus one. Now first we are obviously going to have to access index of using a string and we are going to have to somehow get access to all these characters. And like previously this was realistically never going to happen. But I still went ahead and tried to figure out is there some way of calling this function without using parentheses. There are indeed a few ways and I will show you the two that caught my attention the most. If we constructed an object with a value of property then we could assign this property to the index of function. Now the interesting thing about value of is when we actually use the plus operator to convert it to a number it doesn't actually just convert it to a number but rather it calls the value of method on that object. So by default there is a value of method that will convert it to a number but if we define our own value of method we could get it to call index of and that would result in minus one. We can also create a similar object but use two string this time which would get called if we try convert the object to a string. So if we add an empty array to convert to a string, oh guess what, it doesn't actually work. And it looks like that's because we just had to wrap it in parentheses. So this was simply never going to work out because I could not think of a way of constructing such an object without using these curly braces. So this is where I then decided to ask a question on code golf. I created a challenge to try obtain the minus character using only the plus and square bracket symbols. I pasted all the definitions that I had come up with and also the ideas that I had come up with that were unfinished. Surprisingly, within about a half an hour, I got a result from two different people and they both actually got almost identical results. I'm going to head back to my visualizer here so we can visualize how it works. So they first attempted to get the dot character, which was also going to be very useful for us, so with that we can uh, create decimal points. We are once again going to simplify all digits so that it's easier to comprehend. Now if you remember, this pattern here results in undefined, so I'm also going to simplify all occurrences of undefined. So we're then converting undefined to a string. We're once again wrapping it in parentheses and then we're getting the fourth character, which is E. We're now constructing a string with the value 11E100. This scientific notation for a number creates a very large number. And so we then convert it to a number using the plus operator. And this results in 1.1E plus 101. And we had it as 11E plus 100. And if you know about scientific notation, then typically when we represent it, the value here on the left is typically less than 10. And so JavaScript converted our representation from this to this, and now we have a decimal point. We could then convert that back to a string by adding an empty list. And we now have this string with the dot character. So we can now get this second character out of the string, and we have the dot character. And now if we type in any number with a decimal point, we can just concatenate this dot character and we've got a number with a decimal point. So with this dot character, they came up with a great way to get the minus character. 
So I'm once again going to come back to my JS fiddle. So we're using the dot character we had before and what I'm just going to do here is simplify all strings. So now you can see this is a lot cleaner. So now we have 0 0.0000001. We'll concatenate that together into a single string. And when we convert that to a number, JavaScript will represent that using scientific notation. And this scientific notation has a minus in it. So we can convert that to a string. And we can now take out the third character and we now have a minus. So like before, we can now start concatenating this to other numbers. So if we have minus 1, then we can just concatenate minus and 1. So that is nearly every JavaScript number representable using only these three symbols. Now we just have a couple more numbers to do, and that's infinity and nan, so not a number. So creating infinity was quite easy. So what we once again did is used undefined to get the E character, and we created this string 1E1000. So this scientific notation represents an extremely large number, and it's so large that JavaScript cannot represent it, and so when we convert it to a number, JavaScript will just think it's infinity. So minus infinity is quite similar. So we once again have the minus character, and we're getting infinity in the same way as we had before. So after simplifying it, you can see it's the exact same thing as before, but this time we are putting a minus beforehand, and now this very large number ends up getting converted to minus infinity. So the final number is not a number. So this is very simple, we just have undefined, which we've seen before, by using uh, this combination of uh, square brackets. So I wonder, can you guess what happens when you try to convert undefined to a number? Uh, it gets converted to nan. So that is every single possible JavaScript number representable only using these three characters. Now I'm sure there are further optimizations I could add in here, but I am very satisfied with the result. If you have any other interesting challenges, you could definitely send it to me in a comment. So huge thanks to these people who helped me out here and who were able to get the minus character working. Special thanks to my top Patreon supporter, Helgsfer Hesvik Lizette. And I will go ahead and leave a link in the description below to this JS fiddle and also to this question that I put on code, um, code golf. So yeah, that's going to be all for this video. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.